will have a fireside chat with our industry speakers. On our second half, we will present some solutions that could help your HR organizations. Now, before we officially start, we also love to hear from you. So if you have questions about our speakers, we, we encourage you to scan the QR code on your table and we will address your questions during the Q&A. Okay, so without further ado, let me quickly introduce our Fireside, Ch Fireside Chat speakers. This is my first time seeing an actual Fireside Chat speaker. <laughs> it's my first time in three years. <laughs> okay, so first, he is the founder and CEO of Hungry Workhorse, a digital and culture transformation consulting firm. He is Institute Fellow at the U.S. At the U.S.-based Institute for Digital Transformation. He is the chairman of the Digital Transformation IT and Enterprise Governance Program Committee at the Finex Academy and chairman of ICD Committee of the Financial Executives Institute of the Philippines. He is a prof professorial lecturer in the MBA program of the LaSalle University where he teaches strategic management. He is also a lecturer in the FEU Graduate School of Business where he teaches governance, entrepreneurship, negotiation, and leadership. He is a business columnist and a writer for Manila Times, Manila Bulletin, and Business World. So, um, my dear HR um, guys, here's Mr. Ray Lugto. Now, our next uh, Fireside Chat speaker, Harsha Pudasi is the CEO and co-founder of MyHCN. He enough. was... That's well, enough. That's enough. <laughs> that's enough. Yes. Okay, let's go to this now. Who's Harsha? <laughs> no. <laughs> See, this is going to be very exciting. <laughs> next, um, our next speaker is Ms. Christine, an HR capability builder, trusted advisor, and HR business partner with proven track record of delivering results in building and transforming organizations and workforce capabilities through technology and implementation of scalable and sustainable people and admin programs and initiatives. Here's Ms. Christine Diane Labanda, Chief People Officer of Quantex. Our next speaker is Ms. Faith Bautista, the General Manager for Human Resources and General Affairs of Terumo Philippines Corporation. Ms. Faith is the current General Manager for Human Resources and General Affairs Department of Terumo Corporation, where she started working as production operator in a semiconductor company in 1988. She then shifted her career in 1995 when she was tasked to handle HR and GA department. Currently, she is handling all facets of HR, including the payroll administration and all areas of the company's general services. That also includes EHS and legal legal compliance for all contracts of the company together with the paralegal. At present, she is also overseeing the full implementation of the new HRIS being handled by Techcom Global and MyHCM. Here's Ms. Faith Bautista. Hi, Ms. Faith. Next. He is a proven leader with multiple years of success across the numerous facets of HR, with specialization towards organizational development and HR generalist discipline. With diverse exposure to different industries, with particular focus on technology. His main purpose or mission is to help enable and empower leadership teams toward the next phase of the transformation through maximizing their greatest resource, their people. He is Mr. John Tanchi, Senior Manager for APAC of Microsoft. And of course, to moderate the Fireside Chat session, let me call on our big boss, the no, CEO. No. <laughs> this is not going to be <laughs> The CEO and co founder of Techman Global and Anadoc, Mr. Lars Jefferson. Okay, so we have the mic, Moses. If that's the case, speakers ready? Let's start the fireside chat. Good luck, bosses. Thank you very much. So uh, I'm going to moderate uh, this uh, little discussion, and uh, I just want to comment a bit on uh, Clive's presentation. 
which I found was very interesting. And I, I, uh, I know that all of you here have been working uh, two, three times more than you used to do in the past uh, three years because uh, we have ourselves experienced uh, a, a huge importance of uh, human resources team in our own company and I know in your companies your role has also been very very important in this uh, last few years so uh, I'm also very excited that uh, this is our first on-site event for three years and it's an A-type event so uh, that really shows also the importance that we feel that uh, this brings we have so so Lilo he mentioned about uh, local recession about uh, different uh, um, in, uh, different uh, uh, cases that we are had in the world of different uh, global crises. Now, if you if you consider the reason we are seeing this now and we continue to see this is because we have a completely integrated global economy today. We have uh, if you if you go back in the 16 I think 1639 or something, Japan isolated themselves for almost 200 which uh, is more than 200 200 years. Can you imagine a country that have no communication, no trade, no no link to the outside world for more than 200 years. Today, we have uh, people answering uh, the phone in Philippines for uh, clients in, uh, in the US. We have uh, manufacturing in uh, Laguna for Japanese companies. We have uh, delivery of uh, goods to all of our homes from Lazada. We have a complete integrated uh, economy. So when there's a war in Ukraine, it hurts us here, very far away. When there was a war in Vietnam, it was big news, but even Philippines is close to Vietnam, it did not have that much effect on the day-to-day uh, -day life of the people in this time. So now, this disruption that we see is because we are integrated around the world. So, I think, I think as we are a global economy, we are not going to see much changes. Whatever little or big thing will happen somewhere in the world will have an effect on our daily lives. So. Uh, with this, I would like to start our little chat and ask some questions. Uh, so I, I would like to start with uh, Miss Christine and, and we understand what is the situation of the HR department in the Philippines and what has been kind of the effect of the last few years. What are, what are the experiences you have? You can talk about yourself and what you have done and what is what is that you are doing to now be ready for this global recession or this situation that you are going to face? Okay, so currently um, as the rest of you would know, no, the first thing that um, the challenge really that we currently right, uh, have right now is the shift, no? the shift from mouse to house, right? So um, questions such as, you know, until now that we ask is, um, do we have the proper framework to actually continue with our three important things? No, we have what we call um, what you continue our purpose, right? How do we go about looking at making sure that we track and you know maintain and even elevate performance amidst certain mobility and boundaries that we currently have? No, and then lastly is trials, right? Um, working in an e-commerce company really. Um, priority is about priority rush urgent, right? Um, and all of these things seem the same for us. So, and you know how it is right now. Time is currency. So how? And so the question right now for all of us in HR is: How do we know our business? No? How well do we know our business, right? And then how do we actually provide for four things, right? Do we have the proper tools, right? How do we actually create that network, that sense of community, regardless of wherever we may be working, right? The second thing is, of course, do we have the right systems, right, to ensure that people will continue to be productive and to be the best versions of themselves wherever they may be? And then lastly, how do we actually ensure that the processes, right, are so dynamic and flexible that we will continue to look at things the AU, like business as usual, or how do we look forward? So again, it's like you can summarize it and then you look at your tables, TBSP, tables, food, tools, behavior, systems, and processes. These are the challenges that, you know, um, uh, for me uh, as an HR working in an e-commerce company, um, currently have. So how did we 
uh, go about this. Of course, it's about shifting, no? Shifting our, uh, shifting the framework, no? As I mentioned, it's all about looking at things hyper for, uh, hyper focusing on the priority of our business because at the end of the day, the number one priority of HR is number one push people agenda. Number two, and then how do you act? make sure that that agenda is pushed and then uh how do you become a business partner so i think that's it for now before uh, i can smoke the fence so that thank you yeah well, thank you very much it was a very comprehensive and good uh, reply and and uh, if you you put your microphone down but uh, if i can ask you just one uh, like do you have any story or anecdote or anything from the last three years that kind of picture of the gives of a picture of the situation that okay. you were in like one day you woke up and this happened or things and, and how you dealt with that okay actually i would like to say something like one day i didn't realize if i did sleep at all or oh. if i woke up okay. right so i'm sure that most of you why I'm, I'm i'm actually emphasizing the fact that as hr all of the people here must have been the actual frontliners and the face of the company to the people. Is it not? Yes. And having said that, I will not, uh, I will never, you know, forget the experience we're in. It's different. I don't. I'm not quite sure, but for e-commerce, it, it's different, right? While most people are looking at how do we actually right size the company, my problem is where do I actually look for the right people and the right talent because we were expanding at massive growth like 8 to 10 percent of our weekly and daily because we have become classified as an essential goods or services to the people while everyone is uh, in community quarantine and so the problem that um, I had at that time was different how do I actually ensure that I get to support business expansion at a time, right? That no BCP and no, not even a crisis. So there's a difference between BCP and crisis management, guys, no? And I didn't know which one to actually go ahead because it was a good problem. And yet at the end of the day, the expectation is we will be putting more people. So, um, and that's the time that we're, you know, um, uh, you know, I, I have to rely mostly with the rest of the team that I have, no? That really made it uh uh who worked with me, you know, um sleepless nights that we spent were working like sixteen hours a day, you know. And sheer resilience lang are uh, what really um made us successful. So one time when I opened the television and people were actually um, you know, waiting for it, right? Because not even the government is 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 ready for the influx of people going back to the offices. And I remember I said, AC, where are our people? And um he said um, they're already on their way and route to the office. And I said, and that time I had to say that I think we did good. And then I turned up with you. It was around 6 a.m. Then I was with already. So, there. Very nice. I mean, uh, I, I have to tell you that uh, one of the organizations I've been very impressed with is Lazada. Uh, you know, because at the same time, you have been facing all these challenges and creating a massive growth. You have also increased the customer experience many, many times. It's something that is easy to do if you're kind of on a normal path. But dealing with all of this and at the same time creating a, a, a fantastic platform uh, is really uh, 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 very commendable. Thank you very much for the contribution because we, I think none of us can live without uh, uh, especially Lazada and other companies like Lazada today. So uh, for, for you, Ms. Uh, Faith, uh, can, can you talk about you, your HR processes, what what processes have been before and after and during, and, and how things have evolved uh, during this past years? Yes, we can do. Good morning. Sorry, I think that was because it's my first Oh, don't worry. <laughs> uh, uh, the processes of HR before and now, I have not seen any much difference. Or I have not seen any much uh, much changes from before the pandemic and as of now. Why? Because in a manufacturing company, producing medical device like a syringe, where thousands or millions of people need it. Um, some other companies before the pandemic or during the pandemic, like it was in March 16, 2022. Um, 
other companies are thinking of oh, how, how, how shall we send people back home? How shall we, you know, what devices or systems are we going to use so that we could track them, we could monitor their, their workloads, their assignments. But in our case, we are not, for me, we are not, we don't have, we didn't have the time to think of that because in our case, what we are looking into is how to make our people report to work. Because we are, we should serve, we should be of service to, to billions of people around the world. Because our market is global, considering that we are delivering savings factors. And some of these are being used right now, and since the, the vaccination began. And that's why. Thank you. So that's why I don't think I don't feel any changes. It's just that the mental resilience is what was improved during that time until now. As regards digital transformation, um, it's just that we have to look for the right people for the right provider on how they will be of service to us. So that even though our people would like to request us Mafate, can, can we work from home? What kind of device or system are, are you going to use so that you could track us? Because honestly, uh, we really would like to serve people even we are at home because we are producing medical device. That's why during that time I thought of yeah, can we contact M my my M I S my my S C M or that one? What system can we give? Can, can they provide to us? Because we really need to monitor our people, even they are working at home. For those who are in offices, but for those who are in the manufacturing plant, we feel sorry for them because they really have to work twenty four seven. Uh, so that we could deliver the syringes that we need to deliver worldwide. So maybe I don't know for for some many for, for some manufacturing companies how 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 were you working during the time. So so for for the BPO industry for the call centers the challenge was to bring the work to the people. You know, bring, uh, I, I, I remember the you know, logistics of uh, shipping computers and buying computers and connecting computers and making sure that they are secure, that the information of the client is secured in somebody's home. But for you, actually, the challenge was to bring the people to work. Yes. Yeah. And, and exactly. because they could not just go down and take the uh, jeepney and things like they were used to. So now, so 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 you are, you, your challenge was not about digital transformation, honestly. Mm -hmm. It was about uh, like brick and mortar or control. Mm -hmm. You had to fix some physical issues uh, because people have to go to work to do their job because they cannot sit at home to make medical equipment. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, you have people in the office who could do that. They can work from home. But, but, but if you have hundreds or thousands of people at work, HR also have to be there, right? You cannot sit at home and work from home and you have, you know, 5,000 people in the factory or 200 people or whatever, right? So it's a it's a kind of very different diff different situation than, than many have uh, experienced. Now, yeah, you are completely opposite because you are a digital company. Microsoft uh, is, is, of course, a global digital company that this office was open, you know, during the pandemic and I guess there was nobody here. <laughs> and, 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 and you, you, you said, oh, I, I look forward to this event because I will also get to go to the office for once, you know. So, so what were your challenges as an IT company? I mean, you are more of a regional role, so maybe you can give us a little bit of perspective, not only for Philippines, but as an as a IT company, what was, because there was something that was easy for us also, we could like work from home from day number one, but what were the challenges, what was difficult? Sure, sure. So firstly, to make a point on our statement, there's actually no one in the employee side of this office right now. Um, and that's, I guess, the whole evolution of and extremes of how companies adapted to the pandemic. From my perspective, I'll shift a bit personal here just to land the point. Um, this is actually my second stint in Microsoft. So I was here 
for around four years and then I moved out for around almost a year. And then recently I came back maybe 10 months ago. And where I moved, it was also a technology company. However, my learning was that one of the things that all of us in this room as HR need to consider, and also leaders, is the word inclusion, which I think Hiro touched on, which I think Faith and Christine also touched on to a certain extent. Each company is very different and unique. So when I entered this other company, I think it was a 900 people company, so I was leading HR for that company. I applied the same methodology and principles I learned in Microsoft. Obviously that failed. That did not work at all. Um, because it was a different business model, very different employee demographic, employee type. And I think that's always the first step about how inclusive are you towards really understanding your employee demographic and what will fit for them. You think about all human beings, God gave us two ears and of course one mouth, right? So your ability as HR to really listen and hone in on not just what employees are concerned about, but also about what the business needs at this point in time, I think is very critical towards how you adapt towards the post-pandemic reality. Aside from that, I think across all companies, culture still has become even more important in this day and age because those are ideally your grounding principles towards how you decide on any decisions for your employees. So I think that's still the bedrock by which most companies would operate and most companies would decide on today. And then the last piece, of course, we all touched about tools. So what I realized when we got into the pandemic was that you needed to have more creativity towards how you solutionize the common problems of your employees through the help of tools. For example, for us in Microsoft, one of the things that we leveraged on was Power Apps, which is very low to no code, which means even someone who does not have a tech background can easy, easily create an application from that. So we created the, it's more like a safety reporting app and also when you need help through the Power App platform, it's you can easily place there if you're safe, if you're not safe, if you need help and what type of oxygen tanks you need. So that at least, no matter which employee you are, no matter where you're at across the Philippines, we'd be able to get help to you. And that's, I guess, an example of you know how technology, no matter what type of industry you're in, can really help you overcome some common day-to-day -day challenges without so much complication or so much um, labor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very, very good. So, so uh, technology definitely has been a cornerstone for for many companies. I mean, unless you are maybe also even using technology to organize your transportation and and maybe in this case create a, a, a booking app to make sure you get the right people at the right time in the right place, right? But but uh, uh, in, in my experience. One of the, uh, and, and this goes to you, uh, Ray, maybe you can uh, talk a bit about this. One of the challenges with technology is uh, to be, well, we, we talk about being inclusive, we talk about empathy, we talk about many, and some of these words, most people didn't know before the pandemic, right? How many organizations talked about empathy at a bigger scale? Now everybody's talking about uh, uh, values like this. And, and in my experience, it's because it is easier to forget somebody when you don't see them. Like we, 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 we have in a great place to work, 95% score, but what about the 5%? You know, where are they? So the next step for our organization is not to be a great place to work, not, but to be a great place to work for all. So how can technology help us to be more inclusive, to bring people in, to make sure that there's nobody sitting somewhere at home and think, why nobody called me today? Why did nobody send me a chat message? I'm working, okay, I have a project, but still, I would like to talk to somebody about something. So maybe, Ray, you can talk about technology. No, I think Harsha is the best person there. Really? Yeah, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll supplement that thing. Okay. <laughs> I, I think I, um, I can really give a very interesting perspective about what you just mentioned, uh, just echoing on what uh, Jan uh, mentioned earlier. So, uh, 
once the pandemic hit, we, we majority of the organization, except for the manufacturing, switched to work from home, work from remote. Um, and then two applications became very popular. One is, of course, Microsoft Teams. The other one is Zoom. With that, we saw companies trying to keep the engagement going. It was the key thing. How to keep all the people who are connecting remotely, working from home, HR's key priority became, are they really working, are they sleeping, uh, and then also are they really well and safe, are their families safe, so those are the challenges um, that was going through. So we as a technology company, we, we started thinking about how people engage at that point, and we saw Microsoft Teams and Zoom sort of applications are like the blue at that time majority of the people were always on those applications. So we, as a tech company, we thought, why don't we innovate and bring interesting experiences to drive that whole employee experience uh, to another level, rather than employees needing to log in here and there. Why don't we let employees engage within the same platform that they communicate, like Microsoft Teams? So with that, we came up with some interesting uh, applications like digital agents, where when you're working from home, like uh, as you, uh, just to answer your question, in the morning, you'll say good morning and uh, give a greeting message, show what work is there for the day. And it's like you are having a personal assistant at work from the beginning of the day to the end of the day. And during the day, if you have various challenges, you can actually reach out to that agent and ask, okay, I need this help. Because you're working from home or remote location, I need to get a new uh, connectivity or I need to get, um, let's say, a new laptop or new uh, uh, whatever related to work that you need. You can just make those requests through that. And also the HR wants to find out health and well-being, how, uh, how well you are keeping. So we found we can actually use this interesting technology for people, people to engage better with the workplace. And that was uh, something that emerged all because of pandemic. If not for the pandemic and whole shift of work, I don't think we, have, we wouldn't have innovated and bring an application to life like this. So this is something uh, 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 which I'm going to talk about during uh, our, my presentation as well. Uh, it actually enables a different experience for the hybrid workplace. Because now, uh, post-pandemic, we are now in the post-pandemic era. Unlike this faith where I, 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 I had soft companies like that, because their circumstances are completely different. You know, they, they need to run their factories 24-7 bring people safe and well, uh, keep, uh, I mean, uh, do lots of health and safety measures. Unlike the other companies like tech companies or various other companies like the BPOs who can switch uh, overnight to work from remote, work from home, where the challenge was different. So that's where we, we felt that these kind of tools uh, can bring that much needed engagement and the employee experience works. So, I, I, I mean, it's very fascinating how fast uh, companies like Microsoft innovated in this place to bring that technology piece to uh, the whole uh, people engagement process. So, that's the kind of so very, answer very, uh, yeah. wearing my tech hat uh, like to give. How do we make sure we don't forget somebody out there in the corner? who have just interacted with the bot for the last 10 days and not talk to a leader or a manager or a coach. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. All right. Now your, uh, your question was, you know, uh, technology. All right, so in 2020, guys, you probably uh, you know, did not notice, but there's two technology companies that uh, sprang out during 20, uh, 2020. And what what is Zoom? Well, Zoom is a competitor of uh, that's uh, Teams, Microsoft, but Zoom. No? Zoom was a note no? uh, before 2020. And another is probably, well, you know this, is TikTok. No? And these uh, represent two areas of, uh, you know, a, an employee's uh, life. Work 
work and personal life. And uh, Zoom represents the engagement. And that's why you know, companies like Microsoft and other video conferencing tools also grew uh, that fast. But uh, you know, TikTok, TikTok represents mental health and well-being. You know, uh, people and employees you know, uh, went to TikTok. I did not go to TikTok, uh, by the way. <laughs> so also my generation. But I have kids. <laughs> so TikTok represented the um, uh, mental health and well-being. And two, uh, those two areas are, uh, you know, the uh, things that employees needed in the, when the pandemic uh, struck. Now, I wanted to give context on the development uh, of the pandemic. In 2020, uh, until, uh, you know, uh, uh, third quarter of 2021, uh, companies moved to video conferencing. It was all about engagement, while employees were moving to TikTok for mental health. And in the... The fourth quarter of 2021 until second quarter of uh, of 2022, it was all about hybrid work. Now uh, companies wanted to go back and uh, you know do hybrid work, and that presented challenges for a lot of organizations. How who do we send uh, home? Who do we send in, uh, at work? And that presented challenges. Uh, and, and when it comes to performance management uh, and, and motivating employees. And then come, uh, you know, uh, this uh, second quarter of 2022. Immediately and suddenly, uh, big companies like Google, you know, Facebook, Apple, wanted everyone to go back to work. You know, they, they commanded their employees to go back to work because it's the, it's needed by the economy. Even our government wanted everyone to go back to work because it's needed in the economy. Now that presented challenges to us, like uh, each of practitioners. So how do we now implement all of these? And uh, if you, uh, you know, if you uh, probably have been reading, uh, you know, the term Great Resignation in 2021. Is that true, guys? Can I see some uh, hands if uh, you're experiencing Great Resignation yes. in your organization? Yes? Yes. 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 Yeah, so it is, it is true. I thought it was a myth. But I was uh, interviewing uh, you know, colleagues in uh, business organizations. It is true. Right? So companies now are experiencing uh, resignations because when the pandemic struck, uh, employees moved back to their uh, hometowns, and when hybrid work uh, came, uh, came in and uh, you know the physical work came in, uh, nobody wants to go back to work, right? Because uh, people and employees, and these are represented by millennials and Gen Z, uh, they they thought that you know life is more than working. You know I can uh, work at home. Uh, and uh, life is short no? because you know we saw deaths in front of us, and uh, you know th this is now complicated by the rise of the economy. There is big economy, you know? so because uh, people got used to video conferencing. Now I can do business online. You know I can uh, you know I can get gigs now like creative uh, you know uh, work. So now there is a pull from the gig economy. There is a push from organizations. Uh, to go back to work, so there is there there is now the problem of uh, HR practitioners. Yes. How do you now retain employees? How do you now develop talent? These are the problems. So now uh, you know it's it's uh, it's got fortunate that logistics and healthcare are growth industries during the pandemic, even technology like Microsoft. But you now so many industries, you know, like hospitality, you know, some manufacturing, you know, you're not as uh, uh, as well placed as the other industries. So these are the bigger challenges. And uh, where does technology come in? Where, uh, you know, how do you address these issues? Uh, you know, resignation is something that is difficult to to address right now. But uh, talent development is something you can address. You know, uh, I always advise in my consultancy work, uh, instead of uh, acquiring or buying talent, why not develop talent? You know, it's cheaper to develop talent internally. Uh, you know, think about you know, RPA talent. So that's something you can develop internally instead of buying it, because those talent are not anyway available in the market. You know, you you will you can find them. No, it's hard to market. You cannot find that talent. It is better to develop that talent internally. Yeah, excellent. Actually, uh, you can answer and gave the. Last question I had, but <laughs> so, okay, let's uh, add something to that point oh, about yes, your yes, yes. percent. Yeah. So um, I think 
One of the things we've learned through the pandemic and post pandemic is that flexibility has a lot of definitions and has a lot of phases. And that's where I think for us no, as, as a company, when we shifted to our hybrid work model, we defined three distinct aspects towards what flexibility would mean to a person. So there's the person's time or frequency of going to the office, there's the person's location, and there's the person's um, actual uh, time spent at work, whether it's full-time employment or part-time employment. One of the things that we develop on top of that is also something so simple, yet what we've seen are so critical, team agreements. That's where we saw the role of the manager and all leaders across the organization really step up towards providing that level of clarity to each employee by having that authentic conversation to drive what works for you. Because what works for you will also work for us too. And that's, I think, to answer your question, one of the things that we've seen enable us to also tap that 5% um, to really not leave any stone unturned or assume anything of anyone's individual circumstance, but rather authentically make sure that all managers have those one-on-one -on -one conversations to develop those agreements with their employees, how they would set themselves up in the new hybrid work model. Excellent. I, uh, so, so in, uh, in our organization, we experienced the great resignation. I mean, Lionel showed the number of 50 to 27 people, and he said retrenching, but in reality, we didn't retrench maybe, maybe one or two. But the rest are people who, like what you said, went back to the province and said, okay, but here I don't have internet, I don't have a good, uh, uh, maybe I have internet, but not enough of bad capacity. And uh, I don't see myself coming back to the city anytime soon, so I will take a break. Uh, that that really happened uh, uh, in this time. Um, and uh, to your point, I think very important now in, in, in our company, in our experience, in our culture, we are leaving it very much up to the uh, uh, individual employees and their respective uh, uh, leaders what works best for them. And, and uh, we have hired people who are, it's unrealistic to think that they will come to the office, even maybe for the, maybe not even for the Christmas party, because, you know, they'll have to fly from some other faraway province. But, but uh, uh, I, I think the companies as such try to do what is best for the employee, not necessarily because best for the employees at the end of the day will be best for the company, in my view. and. Uh, even though I will think maybe I'll be gone in one or two years because I'm in that age, uh, I will not be gone in these two years. But but uh, I have experienced myself in my career from the age of maybe 18 years old, a lot of different mentors who you know were able to bring me boom 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 across my career across the world. How I you know came from Denmark to to Philippines eventually over uh, the last uh, 30 40 years. It was not because I was sitting at home and doing it on my own, it was because I was working with people who were able to bring me forward. And I think this is something that maybe younger people don't appreciate much. They think that they can do their job and then still grow in their career. But I think as, a, as, a, as leaders, we have the responsibility to also try to do what's best for them. It's like uh, uh, your doctor, know that you don't like to go on a diet, but it's best for you, right? We, we, we know that you should not, we like to smoke, but it's better for you to stop smoking. So we don't always have the right uh, uh, intentions in our, with ourselves and the right vision of what we should do. So if you have an experienced HR team, an experienced leadership team, they should also help to bring yourself forward. Talk about bringing yourself forward. What is the opportunity now to kind of upskill, reskill, that's why I said you kind of took it out of my mouth. That was uh, kind of my closing question. Where are we now? And for anybody to answer, you have anything to, to add to it? I, I, I like to go yeah. first uh, okay. because I, I'll share some of the things. I mean, taking a few from what we just ended, mm -hmm. uh, we realize post pandemic, hybrid is going to stay. So if you look at our organization, we are a global organization. We have people in, we now even have people in Manila, uh, 
Lucky Wadaya is um, our first uh, hire for my HCM. And I was talking to her because this is the first time I'm seeing her face to face. <laughs> and uh, her previous job required her to come to work every day to physical office. And she, she was onboarded remotely. Uh, she was trained remotely because we have digitized all our training material. So one of the things uh, we did was we realized um, to continue to attract talent and bring them to speed, we need to have and we need to understand what are the required skill sets for our organization. And all these skill sets, we try to digitize as much as possible, if, especially if, if our own uh, learnings, our internal uh, programs, we have digitized and we have a, a digital platform. People now, someone like Lucky, no sooner she joined, she can log into that platform and quickly bring to speed learning those skill sets, working from home. And she's very happy that she, she got a job where she has gone back to her province and she's working from home and she, she, she just came to Manila since we are having this event. That goes to, the same goes to our staff in Jakarta, Kuala Lumpur, uh, Dhaka, Bangladesh, Colombo, Sri Lanka. All these people are working on a hybrid uh, structure. So how we do it? It's through enabling technology. Uh, from uh, morning check-in to after the late check-out and sharing what you accomplish for the day. All these things are reported through technology that we have built and seamlessly integrated to their day-to-day uh, -day platform. And uh, one of the sharing that I want to share with all of you is with all these resignations and all these things coming, one of the things you need to continuously do is to see how to quickly upskill and reskill your staff. To do that, if you can understand the core competence requirements of the organization and digitize as much as possible content and also connect you to widely available digital content platforms today, learning, there's enormous amount of learning out there for free. You go to LinkedIn Learning, you go to YouTube, you go to Coursera, you can learn anything. So if you really understand uh, based on the industry that you are in, these are the kind of soft skills, leadership skills, communication skills, and core skills that you need to deliver. If you have a structured delivery mechanism, actually you can hire anyone and bring them to speed. Uh, this, this has worked really well in our organization. So we bring interns, very smart people who are graduating, and quickly send these through these programs and bring them to speed. So this is how we've been able to ramp up talent. Okay. All right, Miss Christine, Miss Faith, you have any comments on upskilling, reskilling? Okay. So as you mentioned, though, um, it's already um, learning is already available everywhere. I mean, you can imagine that fix of learning, no? And the best part about this is that most of these things are for free. But for uh, for industries such as ours in the e-commerce, um, here in the Philippines in particular, it is us who's actually defining it. What will be the future of work? And um, as we see it, you have to create the actual um, uh, training or learning for your people. And so what we do is that we do have what we call a flex pen, wherein people have um, allowances to actually go ahead and choose which ones to actually uh, suits their interests as well as what is it that they want to do, no? So it's already embedded in uh, our structure in Monica. But more importantly also is the actual, uh, this is where uh, mentorship really comes very important, right? When it's not available out there, you have to actually curate and create it, no? To suit your your particulars. And so this is uh, especially true because um, part of uh, part and parcel of that, no? Um, we're part of the main resignation, right? So because there's just so many opportunities out there. There's just talent everywhere. Everyone wants to have, you know, greener pastures, everything like that. And so what we're doing right now is that it's also very important to have people who can actually shadow, you know, have this um, mentorship because they will be the ones to actually lead you and guide you, you know, through paths. And then, of course, it's all about um, empowering people to actually shape that kind of, you know, their career and how they move forward. And, Towards upskilling what the currency has. So then. Okay, thank you. Yes. Yeah, actually, it was in the latter part of last year, 2021, that Asian Digital Information um, was introduced to us. To us. 
uh, when some of our IT people, because we really need the IT people in our manufacturing uh, setup, because we have this QAD, we have this uh, computer system that monitors the output in our production area. And then, so these IT people, uh, some of them, actually one uh, two of them died, and then some of them uh, were, were um, was this affected with the COVID. So that's why, little by little, we allowed them to, okay, so you may go on work from home. It's just that, yeah, I forgot to mention, thank you, sir, for mentioning the Zoom and the, the Teams meetings. So we could be able to track them down. And um, actually, they are very diligent that, uh, for example, we, we are their bosses are telling them, hey, you should attend this meeting, through Teams meeting, through Zoom. Through, through Zoom. Um, you have to attend really so that um, we could monitor your, your, your work. So little by little, we are accepting that kind of um, digital transformation. And thanks for Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft, uh, it, it really helped a lot. And then another one is the succession planning. Actually, I believe now in succession planning. Before I don't, because before the pandemic, actually we have a very good attendance record. So even in all, in all uh, offices, even in administration, even in our manufacturing plant, we have a really very good attendance. But when pandemic came, so now I have to believe in succession planning. So it's good that my staff, my managers, and my supervisors, they have really good, uh, they, they have very good talents. That's why we were able to make use of their uh, skill in terms of, um, because of course we have to, to, to monitor the attendance of our people, we have to um, make sure that there is on time payroll, payroll at payroll, um, you know, payroll should be accurate. So even though some of their bosses, you know, um, they, they cannot work in the office, at least we have some people inside or who can um, work in the office. So, yeah, succession planning is uh, really um, a very good tool in order to develop your people. And as mentioned by Ms. Uh, Ms. Uh, Christine, um, you know, ca coming, from the, ca coming from the rank and file, because we do. I, I came from rank and file, uh, rank and file. So I feel, I feel how it is, you know, my boss developed me into become what I am now. Yeah, so, yeah. Mentorship and, uh, yes. yeah. That's all. Yeah. Okay. I, I think, uh, uh, you know, realizing also that your challenge is also, again, when people have been tested positive, they're out of loop for two weeks, right? So they cannot go to the factory for two weeks. So now who's going to do that job? So very, uh, uh, very important part of that is, of course, to have a backup for every function, which is the success in planning. So, yeah, you add something? Sure. Um, yeah, I think it works. Um, for me, no, it does not work. <laughs> this one works. Okay. So, for reskilling and redoing, of course, it's ever more critical. But I think, as a framework, no. Whenever I, we go about talking about what do our employees need to learn, there's always a who, what, and why that we normally ask. So who are the customers that we're trying to touch on? So for HR, of course, it's the employees. For the employees themselves, who are the customers that they're just touching on? What then are those customers needing at this point in time? And by asking that question, it allows, of course, your training programs to be a lot more customer obsessed rather than theoretical things that you might not use in the long run. And the last piece, but most landing point normally is, why does the customer need that? Or why does the customer need that skill? And that really allows a full 180 around an employee understanding that what they're going through as a learning program is not just impactful for their role to but overall it's just very impactful for their professional development overall in their careers. Okay, all right, so uh, I think we are, I'm 
I'm looking at the clock up here. I think somebody forgot to adjust it. I thought, wow, we are talking a lot. It's already 2.24, but uh, I guess uh, we're not that much off. <laughs> so uh, I, uh, my, my, my closing point here is that I think technology has been very important and material in the last few years. And, and probably this shift we already kind of saw coming before. And it, it was just that it, it hit really fast track. Uh, 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 to, to solve some of these problems, whether it's it's the work from home or bringing the workers to the office, or it's a motivation, it's a skilling. That the solution to many of the challenges we have in the in our organizations are digital. But I think it's very important also to remember that uh, and the other part of it is human, and it's very important for the function of the HR to 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 also have that role of uh, uh, you know not being digital, to be analog, to be there, uh, to be physical is very important as well. So so I'm, I'm sure you all uh, see that as a big part of your job as well, but I think we cannot say transformation of HR is just digital because we, we, we have to change our roles much more as well as, uh, as, as people. Um, and and uh, some of the uh, things you said in between, maybe without making a big, bigger point was that our, including your oxygen and stuff, HR became kind of also a health center during this time, whether it's mental health or physical health, it became much more important to take care of people's well-being because uh, uh, there was a real crisis uh, out there at that time. So thank you very much for your input, everyone. And uh, maybe you look like you want to say something. And yes, uh, some last point. Right, yeah. yeah, can I just add one, yes, uh, one yeah. last point? Yes. So we spoke about the role of technology in learning you know, and uh, engagement. But I think right now with uh, our hybrid work and remote work, uh, I think what we need uh, you know, uh, the HR uh, professionals to uh, use technology for is performance management. You know, performance management is something that needs to be transformed. Uh, uh, this point of uh, remote work. And why? Because now it has shaken the traditional way of managing. Uh, he showed the statistic that many managers are Gen Xers, like me, or even uh, maybe boomers. And we are used to the, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, the physical interaction. That's why we demand, though. we command our people to come back to work. Not knowing that uh, this is not the uh, long-term solution to the uh, needs of the employees. So that's why you know, uh, performance management using technology to uh, manage KPIs, no? to uh, you know, to manage performance, no? uh, you know, remotely. That's the key, uh, you know, moving forward. Okay, thank you so much. But um, I think the our um, HR professionals wants to participate in the session. So we got some questions from the QR code that we place in our table. So the first question is: So anyone can answer from our speakers. We all know that nobody is prepared for this pandemic. How do you handle the needs of your company and for your employees? Is there any conflicts? Was there any conflicts during the time? I, I can answer because you know I was in the the soup, so to speak. You know, directly there as a as a business leader. I think uh, so. On the I think on the twelfth of March, I got a, a email from our school that on Friday the thirteenth of March. There would be no school because they want to have a test run. What would be the kind of uh, uh, hybrid or, uh, or remote learning experience so they could learn something just in case uh, there would be no school sometime in the future? And that was actually that Thursday was the last day the kids have been to school until last week. Uh, so, so we all faced uh, that challenge that that. We, we, we were dumped directly in the middle of all of this. So, so in our case, it was the, the leadership team that had created a plan. And, and uh, I think actually before that, they were probably like the school getting ready before that. Lido and Nikki, who is here, they're the local uh, uh, team managing uh, the, the, the local operation here. They already had a business continuity plan, uh, but I don't think they were expecting it to go into effect so fast and so abrupt, but but uh, it was basically you jump in the water and swim, whether you know how to swim or not, and if there's somebody out there, hold on to them. It was very, uh, uh, maybe not chaotic, but but uh, 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 learn as you go kind of thing. That, that was our experience. 
Any other? It's the same one. <laughs> uh, I have one, but it's a bit, uh, bit of a vulnerable moment. So when I was in this other tech company a um, couple of months, you know, I, I think more than a year ago, Remember when NCR went through different stages of the graduate lockdown and you see what all the names and permutations that we had? There was a time when, because again, I applied the same methodology that I utilized in Microsoft, where I really wasn't for employees going back to work. And um, because of government announcement, of course, you have to comply, and also because of the style of the employees, they really wanted to go back to work. So, you allow employees to go back to work. We allowed employees to go back to work on a Monday. Wednesday, we found out someone who went to the office, three people, tested positive. On a Friday, we found out two of the three passed away. And I think that was one of the, and I'm sure, I think Ms. Faith also shared something, I'm sure, with Ms. Christina, also, all of you have similar experiences. That was when Honestly, my personal values as an individual, my professional values as an HR practitioner, and also my role as a leader also of the organization, all got blurred. Um, I hope most of you, if you went through that time, so there's no solution, I'm just giving a situation. What I learned through that moment is just be kind to yourselves. You're one element of an entire leadership team who made that decision. So just remember that when those circumstances do come your way, when there's a business objective, but there's a personal bug that you disagree with, just make sure to always be kind to yourself and don't let it attack you. So yeah. Wow. Okay, so we have another question process. So in creation of your systems or tools, how do you relate that tool is perfectly fit for the company? I I will give a very technology answer because I Okay, so I'll share the experience of how we created this uh, app. We have never built an app for Microsoft Teams and this was emerged during the Pandemic. So the challenges that we had was like we have shifted people for remote work. So people are working from home. We want to see how they engage with the company from morning checking to afternoon checkout to day to day this thing and what they accomplish for the day at the end of the day. So that's where we tailored this application initially for our own use. Then when we built this, we realized that's something that is needed for hybrid work and majority of the people are looking for a similar tool where from morning to evening how uh, an employee can engage and update at the end of the day what they accomplish for the day so you don't need to this this thing will remind you at the end of the day okay are you done for the day if you say yes it'll ask what did you accomplish for the day very simple question and if you have scheduled meetings, it automatically captures the meetings that you attended. The rest of the time that you spent, you can say, okay, I spent two hours fulfilling some orders, one hour planning session. Next day morning, the entire company knows the overall productivity uh, and by department productivity and individual productivity. And within a week, we, based on the data, we can analyze whose productivity is very low. So if the productivity is low, the team leads get an update automatically again through this uh, system. So this is how we fine tune that. To, because people are eternally working uh, from home and we need to have better uh, monitoring of what they actually do. Uh, how much time they spend on meetings, how much time they spend on customers, how much time they spend on delivering projects. And this is how we continuously evolve the application to suit these needs but then when we explore the outside world we realize everybody wants a similar thing uh, because most of the people started asking me this question how do you know whether they are really working at home so i mean this is a trust thing you know, first of all you need to i mean if you're building a, a great organization you need to have a level of trust 
on your employees and, and then openness and transparency is key uh, and constant communication. So if, if with these kind of tools, we've been able to see what's going on with everybody and if, if somebody has not, uh, if somebody's productivity is really low, either he's not updating that uh, end of the day, taking five minutes or uh, he actually don't have work. And also, interestingly, during the uh, this period, we found some people are getting burnt out. That has to this tool. Some people's productivity are beyond 100%, 120%. So we, we immediately asked the team leads, check with these guys, they are overworking. What's going on? Why they are really overworking and some people have less work. So we've been able to balance the workloads as well, thanks to this kind of tool. So to answer to your question, I mean, Probably others can also share how they, Prima uh, uh, and I just is been saying they moved to a digital platform uh, during the pandemic because with the kind of challenges they wanted to have. So I think maybe Christine, you all probably implemented and uh, different systems. So it's a, it's a journey. So we, 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 we've come a long way in that journey and uh, it has worked really worked well for us. Like, okay. So thank you so much to our fireside jet speaker. So we have a lot of questions from um, our QR code, but unfortunately we cannot uh, we cannot ask the questions to the speakers, all of them right now. So what we will do is that we will um, just address those questions maybe via email, or you can actually talk to them one to one um, during our lunch time, so you could get more um, answers from our speakers. But before I let our speakers leave, maybe uh, the survey will prove. Was Harsha, Miss Christine, Miss Pate, and John? Could you pick a number from one to thirty-seven? Pick one number. So, John, eight. Number eight, Eric. You give me the name later. Uh, Miss Pate, what number? One to thirty-seven, except number eight. Ten. Ten. Number eight. Number ten, Miss Christine. Uh, thirty-six. Thirty-six. <laughs> thirty-six. Eight, ten, thirty-six. Was Harsha? Nine. Nine. Eight, nine, ten, thirty-six. Wow. Almost right? I choose one. One. <laughs> okay, so we got one, eight, nine, ten, and thirty-six. Later we will announce the name. Um the the, 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 the name from the numbers that they pick and uh, they will be receiving a, a small gift from um, Tech One Global. Oh. Okay. You didn't ask for class. <laughs> it's from him. <laughs> That's why I did it. Okay, so um, thank you so much once again to our Fireside Chat speakers. Okay. Again, if you want to ask more questions, so I'll